Good evening, everyone. Welcome to our special and short final meeting in December. This is Monday, December 18th. This is the Bennington Select Board, and we're on the third floor of the fire facility. Um, my name is Junie Jenkins, and I have the pleasure of chairing this board, and I'll ask my fellow board members to introduce themselves. Yes, good evening. Sarah Perrin. Hi, I'm Gary Corey. Hi, Tom Haley. Jean Connor. I'm Ed Woods. And also with us tonight, we have, as always, Stu Hurd, our town manager, Nancy Lively, who takes excellent minutes, and we have Jim Byers here tonight. This will not be a live, this is not live, but um, it will be recorded and you can see it soon. It'll be ready for breakfast. It'll be ready for breakfast, Jim says. <laughs> excellent. Okay, we'll start this evening as we usually do with the Pledge of Allegiance. Gary, would you lead us? Sure. Thank you. Thank you very much. Tom, would you like to read the vision statement? I will read the vision statement. Uh, Bennington is a welcoming, engaged, inclusive, and resilient community where everyone, regardless of identity, shares in our vitality and benefits from an outstanding quality of life. Excellent. Thank you. All right. So first up, we have the consent agenda, which are warrants, and that's it. Yes, just the warrants. Is there? Yes, there's a liquor license. Um, oh, yes. Uh, so, any, for the purposes of discussion, could I have a motion to accept? So Perhaps? moved. So moved, okay. The consent agenda. All right, any discussion? No? Seeing none, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed, any abstentions? All right, we're good. Um, next up is public comment. Quick reminder, public comment is for the purpose of sharing information that is useful to all. Uh, Ed is our mighty timekeeper at three minutes and he'll give you a 30 second warning. And um, uh, we, I will call people up uh, from the <coughs> sign up sheet. Is there anyone who hasn't had a chance to sign up that would like to speak tonight? Was that you, Nancy? Yeah. Okay, and your topic? Nancy, you want to come on up and start us off? Nancy White Bennington, I'm asking that the Pennies for Parks program be placed on the ballot in March for the voters to reapprove. It was about three years ago that Don Campbell, was chair of the select board, asked that we start this. This is an options tax. It's costing the town taxpayers close to an extra $100,000 a year. After the town reappraisal is done, it's gonna cost us more. Most of the promises the select board and town manager made about the program have been broken. For that reason, I think the voters should have a chance to decide if they wanna support this. Money was taken from the account a few months ago it wasn't supposed to happen without a public discussion, but it did. You've refused to put this on an agenda for two years, even though I've repeatedly asked you to. We, the taxpayers, have almost $200,000 in the account. I've asked why that money can't go to the rec center, towards the half a million dollars of repairs that you've let build up over the years. As usual, you wouldn't even discuss that. So because you haven't kept your word to the public, I'm asking that the public have a chance to decide if this is a program we really want to support. Thank you, Nancy. Um, Can I make a comment, please? No, not right now. Uh, we're going to hold all comments until the till the end, unless that's fine. Is that okay? <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Um, uh, Sam Rustino, sewer and flooding. Sam Rustino, Bennington, Vermont. Um, as you know, today uh, was emphasis on flooding. I 
uh, took it upon myself now that I have wheels uh, to take a, a square shovel and go around town and start clearing storm uh, drains. I took the process, the first one I hit was South Street in front of town offices, followed by Dewey and, we and Weeks, where um, Mary Morrissey always tends to have flooding in that area. Um, Dewey and Elm, uh, Maine and uh, Valentine, Maine and Dewey, uh, Washington Avenue, and Elm and Putnam. I hit the, any, any um, those were the top ones that I saw that um, needed cleaning out. Um, and they're hard to keep up, but as you know, I mentioned first, and a few other meetings to adopt a, a storm drain. Now that we're coming into winter months, I speak about become a hydrant hero and start digging out fire hydrants. Um, it was mentioned in the Facebook page uh, website uh, uh, for Town of Bennington that there was an emergency uh, repair that needed to be done come Monday. Monday came and went because of the impending storm. It's going to be done t tomorrow on Tuesday. Um, how much of an emergency is the sewer uh, replacement is or sewer repair? We don't know until we start digging. Uh, before I came to the meeting, I walked, or looked at the walkway in front of the, um, off of North Street behind the Bank of Bennington, and I noticed that we have a little more improvement we, we need to do in that area simply because with the high water level, it has um, filled up into that uh, drain, so water does not drain out from the parking lot. And, uh, despite the water being in its banks, I think that riverbank needs to be brought up a little bit. And last night around about eight o'clock, there was a call at the wastewater treatment plant because somebody was very visual. They saw the burning of methane gas. So I was wondering about, is that a common process that we're doing at the wastewater treatment plant, the burning of methane gas? Thank you. Thank you. All right. Um, uh, Donald Washam, what is your topic, please? Oh, okay. No, oh, please come on up. Sorry. Donald Washington, Bennington, three hundred four, Gage, apartment number three. Um, this year, I'm, I'm, I'm announcing my candidacy again to uh, run for select board. Um, I have a couple areas that I, I want to discuss, but I'll do that during the uh, campaign. Uh, other than that, you know, I mean, uh, I've been in the business. Uh, you know, I worked for the sheriff's department in Florida for 24 years. And I worked for Broward Alcohol Rehab Center for another 20 years, and I worked for the Salvation Army for 15. So I think I have a lot of experience that I could offer the town, and uh, that's why I keep coming back because uh, I feel like if I just sit back, then nothing really happens. Thanks. Thank you. Um, Jack Rossiter Munley, Multicultural Community Center. Hello there, Jack Rossiter Munley, Bennington, Vermont. I just wanted to say thank you to everyone who came out uh, last week to the official opening of the first multicultural community center in the history of the town of Bennington. I have the pleasure of being a part of that community center through my work with ECDC, the refugee resettlement agency that operates here in southern Vermont. And we're really excited about all of the possibilities that that community center is going to offer not only for newly arrived refugees, but also hopefully as a resource to many different organizations and initiatives within the town of Bennington that are engaged with building a exactly what the town vision statement says, a, a resilient uh, community where everyone has uh, an opportunity to have an exceptional quality of life. Anyone and everyone who's engaged in diversity, equity, inclusion work, uh, and who is interested in a stronger, more equitable, and more multicultural Bennington, we want to partner in, in whatever ways we can, and we now have a space that affords us even more resources to do so. So we're very excited about that. It is located at 120 Union Street, which is handily also where our offices are. And I would invite anyone who wasn't able to make it to the office opening, we're open now. Stop by sometime and say hi. We would love to see you. Again, we're at 120 Union Street, and it's the Multicultural Community Center of Bennington, Vermont. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Tyler. I can't read. I've forgotten your last name and I can't read it. Colfan. Tyler Colfan, Bennington, Vermont. 
I was very excited to hear of the recently proposed viewing tower on Mount Anthony. In my experience as a former National Park Service ranger and as a hiker just in my own time, I can say that the most popular and rewarding overlook view sites tend to be on summits that are set apart from the main mountain range geographically. Um, they therefore offer the best views of the full panorama of the mountain range. And this is exactly how Mount Anthony is situated. So I think it's a natural fit for a viewing tower. The current trail network on the mountainside is really great for local recreation. But if I'm being completely honest, the summit hike is not particularly rewarding as is. So I think the proposed plan would go a really long way to not only improve recreation opportunities for locals, but to also make Mount Anthony into a destination hike, um, similar to currently White Rocks or the AT, and attract hikers to Bennington. So I encourage the town to do everything it can to support this project. I think it'd be really great. Thank you. Thank you. Martha, you're up. Martha Mackey, Bennington, Vermont. Um, as we all know, there's been some significant flooding happening right now. Um, this is something we're going to see more and more with climate change, extreme weather events. Um, and to my knowledge, the town has not taken any emergency action to provide shelter, uh, particularly for our unhoused neighbors. And that's something I would really like to see happen now and in the future. Um, I know there's a lot of people who take shelter under bridges and the creeks and rivers are currently rushing and it's not a safe environment for people to be out in this weather. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Jean, did you want to, did you want to respond? Yeah, I just wanted to make the public aware that when the public um, has the microphone and they make a statement, it doesn't always, it is not always factual. So when you hear something that may fall into that category, I would strongly encourage people to reach out to a member of the town staff to make sure you get accurate information. We, you know, the public can say whatever they want, but when a, when a statement is made and it just hangs out there and no one challenges it, people tend to believe that whatever has just been said is true, and it's not always the case. Thank you. Stu, do you want to make any comment about Pennies for Park? Uh, Pennies for Park uh, does have about $200,000 Results of two years of charging uh, that as a uh, one cent tax rate increase uh, as approved by the voters. Uh, the, it has been used to facilitate the finishing of the uh, playground at uh, Willow Park. Uh, when we changed out uh, what we thought was an unsafe condition, even though it was certified by, uh, by the folks who, who built it and who inspected it. Great, so thank you. We have done that, um, and the Pennies for Parks is, is otherwise being put into a reserve. Thank you. Um, and uh, in terms of weather events, the Agency of Human Services, I believe, is the one that calls weather events, and um, certainly it's part of the uh, conversation that happens at Project Alliance, and as you know, there's a meeting on Thursday, um, uh, so that the town does not have its own shelters. So we rely on social service organizations in town to either run sh shelters, which one of them does, obviously, or to help with uh, finding shelter, which at this point is usually motel the uh, motel voucher program. And so, I could up sure, that. please. We have an emergency management plan that is adopted uh, on an annual basis uh, in conjunction with the Bennington County Regional Commission. Uh, it provides that our shelter uh, is the Monantine Middle School. Uh, if an emergency is called and the shelter is, is open, uh, that's where we can house people. Uh, the Red Cross would, would <coughs> come to the site and help staff it. Uh, we have the cops and everything. The so, shelter is available, it's just not, we've not reached an emergency that would require it to be open at this time. So if we were seeing flooding similar and to what's happening in other parts of the state, yes. then there may be called an emergency. But. It, it really would depend on the emergency and, and how, how important it is to be able to have it. Yeah. 
Okay. Can Thank I ask you. one follow-up sure. question? Stu, um, I've not read that plan. Is transportation for people to get to the shelter included in, in the trans in the transportation uh, because we don't operate the transportation system, uh, the contact information for the transportation folks are there. Uh, we have an opportunity to work with them should the need arise. Thank you. But there's no specific requirement that they come out and work with us, but uh, as you as you've seen from Terrence and his presentations, you, you know that we and we, um, we okayed that emergency plan, and it's largely a compilation of emergency contact numbers okay. and addresses, uh, rather than what I would consider a plan. It's not a plan of action. It's just mm -hmm. okay. who's where and when. <coughs> um, okay, uh, next up is errors and omissions. Before we do that. Oh, sir. Oh, sure. And some of it's used to heat the duct. Yeah. Okay, good. Thank you. I'm glad you caught that. Um, all right, now errors and omissions? Yes, we have two for you. Normally, these are required to be uh, amended as part of your <laughs> prior to December 31st, uh, which is why we're pushing them here before you tonight. But these are both uh, downtown improvement tax district properties, uh, when they came off the tax rolls as nonprofits, uh, we neglected to remove them from the downtown improvement tax rolls. And so this corrects that error on the part of the town and requires a vote of the board to accept it. Do I have a motion to accept the errors and omissions? So moved. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Uh, do we need to adopt those individually or just all together? Is that okay? All together is okay. Any other? Okay. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Great. Thank you. All right. And then next up is the budget. Yes. Uh, is that That will result based on last year's grant list. So any gross of the grant list will affect an impact of what I'm about to tell you. But we are projecting about a seven and a half cent increase in the tax rate, which amounts to 5.1 percent increase in overall in the tax rate. Uh, the funds go up and down. The general fund has a slightly higher increase. Highway and fire, uh, fire actually increases. Uh, highway uh, is not uh, as high as the general fund. But those will be impacted uh, by any change in the grant list. Uh, hopefully we'll see some improvement in the grant list this year. Uh, that will mitigate to some degree the amount that uh, can be raised by taxes. So it is a uh, pretty much a massive undertaking by the staff. Our staff has done an incredible job this year. We set a target of 5%. And uh, I think the staff did a great job in trying to come as close to that as possible. Uh, we are impacted, obviously, by increasing health care costs, uh, by the costs that continue to be higher than normal, even though we're seeing that inflation is abating. Uh, costs haven't come down. Anyone who goes to the grocery store can tell, can tell you that. Uh, but in, in forecasting for the future, uh, we've been talking with our folks at TD Bank, they're looking to see uh, general interest rates drop from the 5 to 6% that they currently are. 
down into the two and a half to three percent range by the end of the year if things continue to improve. So I think folks are going to see an increase uh, in their ability to purchase things, uh, their ability to borrow money when necessary, mortgage rates, automobile purchase rates, all are, should be coming down if things continue in the process. And that should look well for, for the budget and for our, our tax rate. Any any questions right now, or we'll hold them till this the sixth. Um, do we know the, what will happen? Uh, who what will take up on the sixth? Uh, I have to work with you, with you and Tom. Okay. First. Okay. Uh, I think last year we started with high wage because of relatively self-contained. Uh, that may be the process again this year. Please fire on the second second weekend. Try to wrap everything up uh, in a couple of meetings. Okay, so I think for the public, the thing to know is that the budget is here in all the gory details, line by line item. We spend eight hours going through them on two, two Saturdays, eight to noon, both days in this room, first two Saturdays in January. Everyone is welcome to come, and it is a time when the depar each department head will come up uh, staff will come up and explain the budget, what's increased, what they originally had in the budget that got taken out, uh, what the implications of level funding, which is a funny word because level funding means you're actually decreasing the funding for the next year, um, but what it means if, 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 you know, if they don't buy a truck or they don't do whatever it is in the budget that, that's causing it, it to go up. So it is. I will say for this board, it is really, really not helpful for people to say that we need to reduce the budget as a blanket statement. If we really want you to look at the budget and if there's something you think shouldn't be in the budget that is, then this is the time that the departments make their case for why it should be in the budget. And that's the line of the questioning that we have. We're trying to be as fiscally responsible as we can. Um, but it is, it's also with the understanding that if you kick the can down the road, then it costs a lot more later on when something's broken rather than just maintaining it all along. So, um, so please come to the budget meetings. Jeannie, can I ask one question of yeah, Stu? Yeah, go right ahead. I want to make sure I understand that agency funding is flat year over year. So this is just an, an, an assumption at this point? So there's still time for a, one of the organizations that's, that will be on the ballot to petition if they want to increase their amount. Yes. yes. If, if an organization decides that they would like to receive more money from the town and they begin a petition drive, they are automatically removed from the, the ballot until they are successful in the petition. You can't have it both ways. You can't have this and then ask for more. You can ask for more. And just for my clarity, the, the, that is not agencies that are within the, under the town budget, but those are standalone. Right. And so, okay. So in the town budget is the, the, two, li uh, the two libraries, the rescue squad, Lake Perrin. North Bennington Recreation okay. and BCRC. Okay. Thank you. So everyone else is on the ballot for those. Separately. And those asks come from those individual agencies and it, do we vet any of that before it goes mm -hmm. on the ballot? We yeah. do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. we'll. Yep. Which includes the letter indicating what they accomplished, what their request is. Uh, we, we generally provide the first three to four pages of the 990, which is a federal document they filed that shows how they spent their money, and they yep. generally show a comparison of last year and this year in their budgets. All that information will come to you for all of the agencies 
And the number that ends up on the ballot is the number that was vetted after those conversations? The, the number that is on the ballot is, is what they have been approved for in the past. Uh, Are you talking about within the budget? Uh, no, outside of the yeah. budget. The, for, for years, agencies were required to petition uh, to get on the ballot in the first place. After a time, there were a number of agencies, especially during COVID, that they had been approved all along, mm -hmm. asking for level funding. The voters overwhelmingly approved them. Mm -hmm. Two, three, one in their votes. The board made a decision to place them in the ballot should they not ask for any more money, as long as they provided a certain amount of information for the board to see that they were meeting their mission and their goals. And so Got it. they now go on to the ballot as long as the board is happy with the application that they've made. Got it. Thank you and very much. To their credit, every organization except for one got all their information in, and Stu fact-checked it, right? So we know that we know, all the information is there. we know all the information is there. So, which is excellent. Okay. Good. All right. Enough on that. Um, manager's report. Any discussion? Uh, no. All this is is a presentation tonight. The discussion will be at the budget this meeting. Is the, um, the budget is an agenda item in terms of handing it to us and what we just went over. So budget, we'll discuss the budget on, on Saturday and then it comes back to, once we've had the two Saturday meetings, then it will come back here for more discussion. I don't have to okay. All right. All right, so then this has been our very short meeting. Um, we have need of an executive session, um, but I would ask for a motion to move into executive session. Motion to move into executive session. Second. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you guys for coming.